and now we go to the second chapter of this unit and that is SSI. Remember wounds and SSI go parallel. Before we go for SSI, before we go for, we actually start with SSI. What is SSI? That is defined as surgical site infection. I want to ask one very interesting question. You will yourself answer to yourself that do we think that prophylactic antibiotic doses work and the answer that will be inside you is yes prophylactic antibiotic doses really work well you know why why suppose this is the skin yes and doctors you have made one incision imagine you have made one incision yes this incision means this incision means that you have yes opened up the skin or no yes and now you have to understand that anything can enter inside yes microbes can enter inside so this bacteria or microbes can enter now you have to understand that in order to prevent the infection in order to prevent the infection you require immunity yes or no and if you talk about the immunity there are two types of immunity one is cellular and one is humoral one is cellular and one is humoral the body takes minimum of four hours to activate this immunity it takes minimum four hours so body requires four hours to activate any form of immunity and that is the reason yes that is the reason that during these first four hours your wound is exposed to all these organisms and therefore the first four hours the first four hours are considered as the decisive period or the golden period so therefore remember first four hours yes they are considered as decisive or you can say golden period of wound why we consider them decisive or golden period of wound because they that is the time where you will decide the fate of the wound whether it will get infected or not so do you know if the body is not able to protect itself from the organisms why can't we ourselves do that and how we can do yes we can control this risk of surgical site infection by giving prophylactic antibiotics so if we talk about how to prevent how to prevent prevent ssi how to prevent ssi yes answer is you should be going for prophylactic pro prophylactic yes prophylactic antibiotic antibiotic dose prophylactic antibiotic dose now when should this dose be given this is again a question when should this dose be given now this is this is important when is this given according to who you must have heard of who safety checklist or yes I'll teach you WHO safety checklist also. So according to WHO safety checklist, the prophylactic antibiotic dose should be given within, should be given, should be given within 60 minutes, within 60 minutes prior to incision, within 60 minutes prior to incision. This is very, very, very important. Because many of you, many of you follow this protocol and many of you are still confused with this. What is this concept of within 60 minutes prior to incision? The answer is you can give it, suppose this is the time when you will give the incision. Yes, this is 60 minutes window. This is 60 minutes window. You cannot give it before 60 minutes. You can give it at 60 minutes. You can give it at 45 minutes. You can give it at 30 minutes. You can give right at induction of anesthesia. Yes or no? Induction of anesthesia. You can give it. Yes. Even you can give it before the incision. Before the incision. But, but, but don't give it after incision. After the incision, it is not allowed. And within this 60 minute phase, it is given, but not beyond that. Do you know what is a big reason? Big reason. Why we should prefer to give it what? It is preferred to be given between 30 to 60 minutes. And the most important thing, the most important answer is that, sir, you will give a drug 
and drug will take some time drug will take some time to take the what the peak levels in the blood yes or no so peak level in the blood yes it takes some times and that is why it is preferred to be given within a window of what 30 minutes to 60 minutes it is preferred but yes you can mark the answer confidently as within 60 minutes it's not fixed if you have forgotten you can give it before the incision that is sufficient but after the breach has been done that is not justifiable what is the only exception to this rule the only exception to this rule is vancomycin the exception to this rule is vancomycin except vancomycin why vancomycin this is a slow acting drug vancomycin yes if you talk about vancomycin vancomycin is given is given or administered yes 120 minutes 120 minutes prior to incision where do you give uh, vancomycin actually this is given for cardiothoracic vascular surgeries where actually suppose you are going for a mitral valve replacement and that is a time when you have a risk of what staff mrsa staff so you should know that it is preferred for cardiovascular surgeries preferred for cardiovascular surgeries cardiovascular surgeries where mrsa is a big threat where mrsa is big threat the next concept is students when will you give the repeat dose when will you give the repeat dose answer is repeat dose is given repeat dose is given if the surgery is getting prolonged by more than three to four hours or you can say three to four hours of the index dose after the index dose suppose you have given injection at nine and you are seeing that the surgery is continuing it's 12 now again repeat a dose or remember if the t half of the drug that you have given is crossed again you repeat so when will you give repeat dose yes after three to four hour of index dose index dose or 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 after t half of the dose of the antibiotic whichever is less you follow that suppose the t half is only one hour so you'll have to repeat the drug after one hour yes let us see now what are the various type of ssis okay before that one more thing today do you know we have a very big controversy of part preparation yes or no part preparation yes we always are very particular about part preparation if you talk about part preparation if we talk about part preparation yes or no what is so important about part preparation today we don't use shaving so shaving is not at all advocated shaving is not at all advocated rather we use electronic clipper you use those trimmers na? electronic clipping why electronic clippers are preferred electronic clippers are preferred because shave causes when you do a shaving with a razor yes it causes micro abrasion and they are actually going to potentiate what ssi so electronic clippers are preferred let us talk about a very interesting thing that is how we define ssi ssi if you classify surgical site infection it can be infection along the incision that you have made it can be incisional therefore it can be incisional or it can be infection along the organ so organ ssi so it can be organ or it can be incisional it can be organ or it can be incisional if it is incisional ssi it can be the incision along the skin and superficial tissue part skin and subcutaneous tissue or it can be the incision line involving the muscle fascia peritoneum yes so it is again divided into superficial incisional ssi superficial incisional ssi and deep incisional ssi so we have deep and superficial let us see what is superficial incisional ssi if you talk about superficial incisional ssi it is defined as yes SSI surgical site infection along the skin along the skin 
and subcutaneous tissue along the skin and subcutaneous tissue within within 30 days of surgery within 30 days of surgery so within 30 days of surgery if you have the infection along the skin and subcutaneous tissue this is defined as superficial ssi if you talk about deep incisional ssi what do you mean by deep incisional ssi yes deep incisional ssi is defined as it is the ssi it is ssi along the incision line it is ssi along the incision line other than other than skin and subcutaneous tissue so if it is ssi along the incision line other than skin and subcutaneous tissue yes within 30 days of surgery or within one year case of implants so within 30 days of surgery or within one year in case of implants yes this line is very 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 catchy and very important i'll explain it to you now if you talk about the incision line suppose you did a you did a laparotomy and after 15 days there is pus coming out from skin and subcutaneous tissue what is it is it ssi yes it is ssi because this is dam in the right time that is within 30 days and what type of SSI? It is a superficial type of SSI. Same thing. There is myonecrosis along the incision line after 25 days. Is it SSI? Yes, this is SSI, but this is deep type of SSI. Suppose you went for TKR, knee replacement, yeah, total knee replacement. And then after two months, I'm just listen to this. After two months, yes, you have pus coming out from what? The skin subcutaneous tissue yes is it ssi no it is not ssi because for skin and subcutaneous tissue be it implant or non implant surgery it will be considered as what yes same within 30 days but same thing pus is there is pus which is coming out from what you can say or after two months of implant there is myonecrosis yes or maybe after let me change the question now Yes, maybe after eight months, there is myonecrosis along the incision site. Myonecrosis along the incision site. Is this SSI? Yes, this is SSI because deeper part of the incisions, if they are involved, even within one year of the implant, they will be considered. They will be considered as. Is that clear? Yes. So, I hope this example was good to explain it to you. Next is. What about the organ SSI, the concept of organ SSI? If you talk about the concept of organ SSI, this is the SSI involving anatomy, involving anatomy manipulated during surgery. Anatomy manipulated during surgery other than other than incision line other than incision line yes within that very same part within the 30 days of surgery or within one year of implants now try to understand this this is again very 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 important like suppose i did a lap cholecystectomy i did a lap cholecystectomy on day 15 the patient came to me with pain in the right upper quadrant and then i sent that patient for ultrasound also, there was a complaint about fever and chills. So, I went for ultrasound and ultrasound showed me 20 cc collection in the right, you can say, subdiaphragmatic space. So, is it SSI? Yes, because during surgery, the anatomy around the gallbladder was manipulated and liver is one of them. Yes, you always, yes, you always put the gallbladder on the liver bed and then you take it out. This is how you do. There is always a collection, some collection and then you clear that collection from the right uh, subdiaphragmatic space so this is suppose a patient underwent surgery and after two months the lady came to me with that very same thing collection the right subhepatic space is it ssi no boss this is not ssi if after two months she is developing so time window is again very 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 important 
And the next thing that we have is, suppose a patient was operated and lady came to my office or to my clinic or to my chamber. She said, doctor, you did the surgery and I am having pain at the right iliac fossa or maybe the left iliac fossa after 15 days of surgery. And the, what was the surgery done? Lab cholecystectomy. Now, is this SSI? Is this SSI? Was the anatomy around the left iliac fossa manipulated by me? No, not at all. And suppose I went for ultrasound and there is boggy inflamed ovary and fallopian tubes. This is a case of what? Yes, a PID and pus in the left paracolic gutter. This is not at all attributable to surgery because this was not the part of surgery. So hence, when you get these kinds of things, you should be knowing what is SSI, what is not SSI. And this is not SSI because this anatomy, the anatomy of the left iliac fossa was not manipulated. You did not do anything to ovary and tubes. And that is why this is not considered as SSI. So, in a nutshell, SSI can be incisional or organ-based. Incisional SSI is further of two types, superficial and deep. And organ SSI, I have already told you, it's the SSI of the organ or you can say anatomy manipulated during surgery other than the incision line. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.